capable of using the rational root theorem and any other theorems that might come in handy to completely factor um, this fourth degree polynomial. Uh, to start off with, we're going to find uh, a sub 0 divided by a sub n. And we're not going to find the answer like we're a reduced fraction. We're really concerned with the factors of the top number over the factors of the bottom number. So in this case, a sub 0 is the last coefficient. And in this case, I really don't want to worry about the minus. So we're just going to take the, the 12. We'll deal with the plus or minus at the end of this. Uh, and then we'll divide by the first coefficient, which is 6. And we just want to break it into all its possible factors. So the 12 is a 1, a 2, a 3, uh, a 4, a 6, and 12. And the denominator, uh, all the factors of 6, which would be 1, 2, 3, uh, and 6. And then we want to divide everything on the top by each individual one on the bottom, every factor in the top. And we're going to look at all the possible positive and or negative numbers here. Uh, so everything divided by 1 would be 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, and 6, and 12. And then everything divided by 2, the only ones we're going to get out of that are 1 half and 3 halves because everything else reduces. And then we're going to divide everything by 3. And we're going to get 1 third, uh, 2 thirds, and 4 thirds and the other ones reduce. And then we're going to divide everything by 6, and the only one that we're going to get is 1 6, because 2 6 reduces 3 6, 4 6, and so forth and so on. So these are all the possible rational roots of this polynomial. Now we just have to go through and find which ones actually work, hopefully work. Um, I'm going to use Descartes' rule of sign, which says uh, the number of changes in sign as you go from left to right is the number of positive roots that this thing might have. There's only one change in sign, and that's one reason I'm going to use it. Uh, so there must be a possible one positive root. And since it's not an even number, that's the one I'm going to go for. Um, by the way, there's four possible factors of this thing. Only one of them is going to have a positive root. More than likely, the other three have negative, unless they're imaginary. <coughs> We're going to use um, quick synthetic division. So I'm going to set up the coefficients. And I'm only going to do one line of work, and the rest of it I'm going to do in my head, hopefully, and, and with a calculator. And since we're looking for one positive root, I'm just going to start with the first positive number, 1. Drop the 6 down. 1 times 6 is 6. 6 plus 11 is 17. 1 times 17 is 17. Uh, minus 66 is uh, negative 49. Oops. 1 times negative 49 uh, minus uh, that 59 up there is going to be a negative 108. And then we're going to have net, uh, 1 times negative 108 minus 12, and that will give us uh, negative 120 which really isn't going to help us at all. We're really looking for a zero there or something really close. Uh, give us an idea that we're near the x-axis or a factor. So the next number up is 2, drop the 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 11 uh, is 32. Uh, I keep saying that. 23. Uh, 2 times 23 uh, minus that 66 is going to give us a negative 20. 2 times negative 20 is negative 40. And we're going to subtract away 59, and that will leave us with a negative 99. And then we're going to multiply that by 2 and subtract 12 to finish it off with a negative 210. All right, keep on going. Don't get frustrated. Uh, start with 3, drop a 6. Two times, or I'm sorry, 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 11 is uh, 29. Uh, multiply that by 3, it will be 87. We're going to subtract 66. That will leave us with 21. Uh, 3 times 21 minus 59. That leaves us with 4. Hey, that's nice. And 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So what we have found is, by the remainder theorem and the factor theorem, 
that one of our roots is x is equal to 3 <coughs> and one of the factors is x minus 3. So we've actually factored one of the polynomials out of this. What's important here is once you get down to a 0 you don't want to go back to these original numbers. You want to use these four numbers here. So we're going to start all over again with 6, 29, 21, and 4. And technically what you should do is test that 3 one more time. It might have been a double root. I know because I built this example that it's not, but you really, really should test 3 one more time. Alright, so we found our one positive root, so now I'm going to concentrate on finding the negative ones. So we'll start off with negative 1, bring down the 6, that'll be negative 6, that'll be 23 when you add it to the 29. Negative 1 times 23 is negative 23, that'll leave us a negative 2. Oops. And then here we're going to get a positive 2 plus 4, which is 6. So relatively close, uh, we might be in the ballpark. Let's try negative 2, drop down the 6. We're going to go negative 2 times 6 is negative 12, plus 29 will give us uh, 17. And then we're going to multiply that by negative 2, and we're going to add 21. That'll get us negative 13. We're going to multiply that by negative 2 and add 4, and we're at 30. Hmm, doesn't seem to be going the right way, but nothing fancy is going on, so let me try one more. Um, or one more after that. Drop down to 6. This will give you negative 18. Uh, 29 minus 18 would be 11. This will give us negative 33. Uh, we'll add on 21 and that will leave us with negative 12 which would be positive 36 plus 4 which is a positive 40. Alright. One more and then maybe we'll try some fractions. Negative 4 drop down the 6. Negative 4 times 6 is um, negative 24 plus 29, that's 5. This will be a negative 20 plus 21 will be 1. Hey, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 plus the 4 is 0. So we have found another root. Our root is negative 4 and the polynomial or binomial specifically that this is associated with would be x plus 4. So we found another factor. The nice thing now is we're down to three numbers. Once you're down to three numbers we're talking about a quadratic. So if we bring that up over here this is 6x squared plus 5x plus 1 and if we want to um, factor this we need to multiply the first and the last, so 6 times 1 is 6, so we're looking for factors of 6 that add up to 5. Well, that would be 2 and 3. So this would be 6x squared. Um, they're both going to be positive because they have to add up to a positive 5. And the order doesn't matter which way you put them. Uh, group the first two and pull out a common factor of 2x. Left behind is 3x plus 1. The GCF of the second two, since they have nothing in common, and it starts off with a plus, it'll be positive 1. Left behind is 3x plus 1. So this is going to factor into 3x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. And all we have to do is add in the other two factors and we'll be done. One of them being that x plus 4, and the other one being that x minus 3. And then we have taken uh, g of x here and factored it into this mess. <laughs>